Hello, my name is Dr. John Lemonick of the Penn State College of Medicine, Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center, and formerly of Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. We were asked by the editors of Gastroenterology to discuss our upcoming article entitled, Rectal Endomethacin Does Not Prevent Posterior CP Pancreatitis in Consecutive Patients. We performed this study as a natural follow-up to the Paramount Pharmacologic Prophylaxis Study performed by Dr. L. Munzer and colleagues that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in April of 2012. In this excellent study, they showed that rectal endomethacin can decrease the rate of post-ERCP pancreatitis in high-risk individuals from 16.9 to 9.2%. Almost as importantly, the rate of moderate to severe post-ERCP pancreatitis decreased from 8.8 to 4.4%. Because of these findings, many endoscopists started to use rectal endomethacin as primary prophylaxis against post-ERCP pancreatitis, despite the fact that over 80% of the patients within this initial study had sphincter of body dysfunction. We wanted to know if this reduction in post ERCP pancreatitis would be seen when used in everyday clinical practice and not just in our highest risk groups. We performed a prospective, double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial of 449 consecutive patients undergoing ERCP at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center between March of 2013 and December of 2014. <clears throat> The primary outcome was the development of post-ERCP pancreatitis, defined by new epigastric pain following ERCP, elevated amylase or live case greater than three times the upper limit of normal, and need for two-night consecutive hospitalization following ERCP. This definition was taken from the Yale Munzer article to maintain consistency between these two studies. Our initial power calculation showed that we would need 1,398 patients in the study, or 699 in each arm. At the conclusion of the study, 223 patients received rectal endomethacin, while 226 received placebo suppositories. About 70% of our population was deemed average risk for posterior CP pancreatitis, while the remaining 30% were high risk for posterior CP pancreatitis. There was no difference between the baseline, clinical, or procedural characteristics between the two groups. <clears throat> 16 of 223, or 7.2% of patients in the endomethacin group developed post-ERCP pancreatitis, while 4.9% in the placebo group, or 11 of 226, developed post-ERCP pancreatitis in the placebo group. The severity and other complications were similar between the two groups. The study was halted early by the Data and Safety Monitoring Committee due to futility. Our findings show that giving a single 100 milligram dose of rectal endomethacin at the time of ERCP does not reduce the rate or severity of post-ERCP pancreatitis in consecutive patients. These findings are in direct contrast to the recently espoused ESGE guidelines which promulgate that rectal NSAID therapy should be given to all patients undergoing ERCP. We feel there is still clear benefit in using rectal endomethacin in high-risk individuals, especially those with sphincter of body dysfunction. One might argue that since rectal endomethacin is relatively inexpensive with a good overall safety profile, that the possibility of reducing the rate of post-ERCP pancreatitis outweighs the risk. We feel the guidelines that promulgate universal prophylaxis based upon presumptive applications to groups not fully studied is not justified and should not be endorsed. Not only can assumptions lead to unnecessary medical usage and charges, can lead to unnecessary medical legal liability. In conclusion, when used in all comers, rectal endomethacin does not reduce the rate or severity of post-ERCP pancreatitis. Any guidelines that recommend universal prophylaxis with rectal endomethacin should be reconsidered.